Hey y'all, welcome back to Twin Oaks Family Farm in rural Southeast Ohio, USA. Thanks for joining me on our YouTube channel, Twin Oaks Farm Poultry. My name is Melissa and I'm glad that you're joining us. We are in a pen of 32 production red pullets. We're gonna take a look at these young hens and talk a little bit about them getting closer to the point of lay where they'll be actively in the stage of life of laying eggs. But also wanna talk about the some of the parent stock of these production reds. Production reds are hybrids that were developed from Rhode Island reds and New Hampshire reds. And one of the most frequently asked chicken questions that we get is about what breed is a great egg layer? What breed would we recommend for egg production chickens? And inevitably, we'll make sure to include a recommendation in favor of Rhode Island reds because they are like the quintessential brown egg laying chicken. And they're really prolific throughout the world. They were actually developed in Rhode Island and Massachusetts back around the mid late 1850s. And if you ever get an opportunity to just take some time to even do an online search and research the historical background of the development of the Rhode Island red breed. Do that sometime because it's really, really interesting. The foundation stock of chickens for Rhode Island reds was Malay and brown leghorn chickens. And those, those were the foundation. There were other breeds also used over multiple generations in developing the Rhode Island red. But ultimately then, the Rhode Island red, a quintessentially American egg production bird really, also became probably the most well-known representation of egg production chickens really really throughout the world i know white leghorns you know are excellent uh, white egg layers but for your your brown egg layers for consistency for productivity for reliability really really hard to beat Rhode Island Reds. They're awesome. Going to turn the camera around now and keep in mind we are looking at production Reds that are a hybrid based on Rhode Island Red genetics but a lot of these birds are really physically very good representation of Rhode Island Reds. So while we're looking at production Reds going to talk a little bit more about Rhode Island Reds too because there's some more interesting things about them I want to share in this video with y'all. So thank you for joining us. If you like poultry, hope you'll subscribe. We'd love it if you'd like the video with a thumbs up. We understand if you don't like it and we don't mind if you give it a thumbs down and give us some feedback. And, and anybody that finds anything relatable or something you wanna ask a question about in our videos, please put it in comments. We love to get that feedback and read it and genuinely try to reply to everyone. So so thank you so much for joining us. Sorry, y'all. It was awkward with the camera there trying to get it turned around. But these, these are production reds. So this is an example of a bird that has strong Rhode Island red heritage in it. So, like I said, even though you're looking at production reds, I want to talk about some of their parent stock, Rhode Island reds. But all these birds here are really a good physical representation of Rhode Island reds. A Rhode Island red is like a mahogany brick colored bird in the feathers, but with black tail feathers. This one actually right in front of me really uh, is a good example of that appearance. We've got that mahogany colored feathering on the body and we can see the black tail feathers and that would be even even more pronounced in a purebred uh, Rhode Island Red. So uh, really interesting that Rhode Island Reds themselves are known as egg layers because when you go back to the foundation of Rhode Island Reds and the, the heritage stock of Rhode Island Reds, they are actually dual purpose birds. You can see these birds, they have some size to them. You know, there's, there's some heft to those bodies. As far as Rhode Island Reds, uh, the, the females, the hens, we tend to see them probably six, seven pounds and the males, you know, maybe eight, nine pounds. They're also uh, pretty, pretty easy keepers. You know, they, they can um, do well on 
limited resources if they have to, but they love to forage uh, and, and they are easy keepers on feed. They were dual purpose birds originally, so meaning that not only were we gonna use them for egg production at some point, we were gonna plan on that bird being a table bird, probably gonna put it in stew. Uh, so as the Rhode Island Reds went on, it is interesting that the genetics were kind of diverged and specialized into uh, a heritage kind of bloodline of Rhode Island Reds and an industrial kind of bloodline of Rhode Island Reds. And what does that mean? Well, a heritage bloodline of Rhode Island Reds themselves were ones that retained that, that dual purpose usefulness where uh, they were more likely to be able to be successfully used as a meat bird and they would still be a good egg layer in the meantime up to being harvested for meat production. On the other hand, the industrial line of Rhode Island Reds were really specialized for egg production. So, um, of Rhode Island Reds, I hope I said that right. The industrial lineage of Rhode Island Reds were really specialized for brown egg production. So, um, why are Rhode Island Reds excellent egg layers they will tend to lay about 300 eggs a year so you can most of the time count on your rhode island red hens for about five brown eggs a week so so these birds are a good example of offspring with rhode island red heritage